The world is changing, global politics are shifting, alliances are crumbling, and a darkness is spreading across the earth. These are not random events, but the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. The Bible speaks of a time of great tribulation, preceding the glorious return of Jesus Christ. We are living in the shadow of that prophecy. For centuries, believers have looked to the heavens for signs. Eclipses, those breathtaking moments when the sun or moon is obscured, have always held particular significance. They are seen as harbingers of change, of divine judgment, and in recent years we have witnessed a series of eclipses that cannot be ignored. These are not mere astronomical coincidences but divine appointments. The world watched in awe as the sun was darkened, a chilling reminder of the day when the Son of Man will return in glory. But it was not just the eclipse itself that was significant, it was the events that followed, the ripple effects that are still being felt today. We are witnessing the rise of new superpowers, the resurgence of ancient conflicts, and a growing hostility towards Israel. The stage is being set, my friends. The question is, are you ready? The Bible is replete with references to celestial events as signs of God's judgment and mercy. In the book of Joel we read, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. This prophecy, echoed in the book of Revelation, speaks of a time of great upheaval and tribulation. While some dismiss these prophecies as mere allegory, recent events suggest otherwise. The increase in seismic activity, the devastating natural disasters, the unprecedented solar flares, these are all signs. The earth itself is groaning as if in labor pains awaiting the return of its rightful king. The rise of radical ideologies, the resurgence of ancient hatreds, the erosion of religious freedom, these are not isolated incidents. The world is being prepared for the rise of the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness who will deceive many, but his reign will be short-lived, for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords will return to claim what is rightfully his. In the intricate ballet of international relations, recent events surrounding Israel have taken center stage. The Jewish state, a tiny nation dwarfed by its neighbors, has long been at the epicenter of global conflict. But what we are witnessing now is not merely a continuation of old hostilities. It is something far more profound, something with chilling prophetic implications. The sudden flurry of diplomatic activity, the whirlwind of treaties and agreements, might seem like a positive step towards peace. But beneath the surface of these diplomatic overtures lies a hidden agenda, a sinister plot that has been centuries in the making. The pieces are falling into place, my friends. The dance of diplomacy is not a waltz towards peace, but a macabre tango with destiny. Jerusalem, the city of David, the cradle of Christianity, holds a unique place in God's plan for mankind. It is the spiritual epicenter of the world, a city coveted by empires and fought over for millennia. And it is at the heart of end-time prophecy. Jesus himself warned of a time when Jerusalem would be surrounded by armies, a time of great tribulation for its inhabitants. Today, we see the nations of the world aligning themselves against Israel, questioning its right to exist. The pressure is mounting, the noose tightening as the world closes in on this tiny nation. Zechariah 12, 3 warns, on that day I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all peoples, all who lift it shall grievously wound themselves. This is a time for vigilance, for prayer, for standing with Jerusalem the daughter as the storm clouds gather. As the global chessboard rearranges, two formidable powers cast long shadows across the world stage. Russia, the mighty bear, and China, the enigmatic dragon. Their resurgence, both economic and military, is not merely a matter of geopolitical realignment. It is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy, a harbinger of the coming storm. Ezekiel 38 speaks of a time when Gog, from the land of Magog, will lead a confederation of nations against Israel. Many scholars believe that Gog represents Russia and Magog, the surrounding nations of the north. Meanwhile, China, with its burgeoning economy and growing military might, cannot be ignored. The rise of these two superpowers, their growing assertiveness on the world stage, all point towards a future where Israel finds itself increasingly isolated. The stage is being set for a final cataclysmic conflict that will shake the very foundations of the earth. For decades, the United States, with its unmatched military might and unwavering support for Israel, has stood as a bulwark against the forces of darkness, but the eagle, once a symbol of strength and resolve, now appears to be faltering. 
This weakening of American influence has profound implications for Israel. No longer able to rely on the unwavering support of its strongest ally, the Jewish state finds itself increasingly vulnerable. This shift in global dynamics is not accidental. It is by design, orchestrated by the unseen hand that is shaping the world for the Antichrist's arrival. As the world watches, captivated by the unfolding drama, a profound shift is occurring. The old world order with its established alliances and predictable power dynamics is crumbling. In its place, a new order is emerging, one characterized by volatility, uncertainty, and a dangerous realignment of allegiances. This is not merely a geopolitical shift, my friends. This is a spiritual realignment, a gathering of forces that has been prophesied for millennia. The Bible speaks of a time when the nations of the earth will be gathered together for battle. In Revelation 16, 14 we read, For they are demonic spirits, performing signs, who go abroad to the kings of the whole world, to assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. This gathering of nations is not a random event, it is orchestrated by Satan himself, who knows that his time is short. As the world plunges headlong towards this final confrontation, a palpable sense of unease grips the hearts of men. Fear, uncertainty, and a yearning for something more permeate the very atmosphere. The old answers no longer satisfy. Mankind, adrift in a sea of chaos, cries out for a savior, a messiah to deliver them from the storm. This yearning for a messiah is not limited to any one nation or culture. It is a universal longing, a deep-seated desire for peace, security, and purpose. And it is into this void, this vacuum of hope, that the Antichrist will step. With promises of peace, prosperity, and unity, he will captivate the hearts of millions. But his promises will be empty, his solutions a cruel deception, for he is not the true Messiah, but a counterfeit, a wolf in sheep's clothing. The world is awash in information, bombarded by a constant stream of news, opinions, and interpretations. It's easy to become overwhelmed, to lose sight of the bigger picture. But for those who have eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts willing to understand, the signs are all around us. We are living in unprecedented times, a pivotal moment in human history. The prophecies of old are unfolding before our very eyes. The stage is being set for the final act of the human drama. But this is not a time for fear, my friends. It is a time for discernment, for vigilance, for unwavering faith. We must study the Word of God, understand His plan for the end times, and be able to separate truth from error. The clock is ticking, my friends. Time is running out. The return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is drawing near. We must approach these last days with a sense of urgency, with a passion for souls, and with an unwavering commitment to the gospel. This is not the time for complacency. It is the time to get right with God, to share the gospel with boldness, and to make disciples of all nations. We have a responsibility, a divine mandate, to share the good news with a lost and dying world. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The world is a dark and dangerous place. The news is filled with stories of war, famine, natural disasters, and moral decay. It's easy to become discouraged, to lose hope. But for the believer, there is hope. We know that this world needs to be changed for good. We are just passing through, pilgrims on a journey to a better place. We have a hope that transcends this world, a hope that is anchored in the eternal. No matter what happens in the days ahead, we can face the future with confidence knowing that we are held securely in the palm of God's hand. We have the promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. Please stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you to all members and subscribers. We are praying for you. If you are listening for the first time and like what you heard, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. You are welcome.